Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Asyadu an la ilaha illallah. Asyadu anna muhammidan. Abduhu rasulullah. That is, with the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, we open it bear witness before the world that Almighty God is God alone. He has no partners. He has no son. Contrary to what many are teaching and projecting before humanity, as we read scripture, we bear witness, again, of the oneness of Almighty God that he is the merciful redeemer, the merciful benefactor. It is he who knows all that has ever been known. We bear witness that when we read the book that is known as the Bible today, that it referenced the coming of Muhammad ibn Abdullah and also in the direction that Esau ibn Miriam, Jesus the son of Mary, Christ Jesus, pointed to the coming of Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the final prophet to all of humanity. So I greet you once again, those who will be listening to our presentation on radio and those who will also witness and view from Facebook and also YouTube. We greet you in the greetings of peace of Assalamu alaikum. To begin, our program, we want to begin with a reading from the Surah 46 of the Quran entitled The Winding Sand Track of Akaf, Akaf, Akaf. And we will read a few passages from the Quran from various surahs, or chapters as you say. The chapter really does not give the right projection of the total worth of what Surah says to us. So this particular ayah that I will begin in our talk today, it states, and we always say it in reading scripture, I would believe in the Shaitan meaning we seek refuge with Almighty God from the rejected enemy Shaitan, or as you would say, the devil. Why would we do this? Because there are so many distractions in this world. And I say that in terms of this world because we have heard from various scriptures and certainly the Quran where it says that this world it is a world of confusion, a world of chattel deception, deception, a world of illusion, illusion. Now, you should think about what has been said with reference to what I have just said, that it is a world of delusion, 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 a world of mystery, a world of great doubt, a world of darkness. We have to learn how to make a distinction when we begin to reference the word world. So what world are we speaking of if we say this world is a world of deception, a world of delusion. Certainly you must be aware by now that there is the world that God has created. And if you accept that God has created the world, then you are actually saying that everything that God has created, it is good. So then what is being referred to when it says the world is a world of deception? It is speaking of the world that the Shaitan has created. And we have to be aware that there's something constantly putting it, pulling it, pardon me, our consciousness, our mind. And as I've had discussions this week, with reference to the very impulse that the Shaitan seeks, the devil seeks to control, to persuade your very impulse. And that's very, very small. Some would might even call it a figment of your imagination and say, I'm talking about this impulse. So let us, let us read. Say, I am no bringer of newfangled doctrine. Among the apostles, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. 
I follow the death which is revealed to me by inspiration. I'm but a warner, open and clear. I am but a warner, open and clear. Oftentimes, we bring great trials and tribulations to ourselves by taking on more than we can handle. Everything has to come in stages when it comes to learning, when it comes to understanding. The baby has to take steps, even in feeding the baby. You start off with milk, and eventually the mother gives maybe some crushed fruit, and then eventually maybe a little oatmeal, or maybe a little uh, cream of wheat, or what have you. Then you begin to go to something a bit more solid. Take what I'm saying for the next few minutes while I'm addressing you, and remember that things should be seen physically, morally, and spiritually, and I'm often interchanging morally with intellectual, morally with intellectual understanding, a mental, a mental working in the mind, in the mind, in the society. Something is happening to pull us away from our natural origin our natural life. So I begin this by saying, I'm not bringing you anything that has not occurred before. I'm not reading to you something that other prophets has not taught before. But Muhammad comes with teaching that gives us clear vision. Clear vision. It is nothing like, like sight, having sight, being able to see. When we are in the dark, we walk into a dark room, we want to see, and we are trying to hurry up and cut on a light where we can see, we can, we can move properly without stumbling, without hurting our toes or falling down. So then, coming into a dark cavern, you see those who go into caves and they're seeking to discover something. They are going deep into the cave. We see those who go beneath the surface of water. They are exploring what is beneath, beneath the water, beneath the sensitivities, as being an imam, as all men are imam. But looking at the role of those who are appointed imams in your various communities, he had mastered at Ottawa, 5403 Virginia Avenue in Shreveport, Louisiana. We're all a welcome. We are those who must move forward and be out front. We're to be out front in our lives. We're to talk consistently, utilizing the truth. We are those who are on a mission. We are those who have been not just labeled servants, but we are servants. We are servants of the law. We are servants of God. Now, how well of a servant you become is actually left up to you. How well your understanding increase is left up to you. Suddenly, always Allah stands above what it is that we are doing. But the more sincere that we are, the more that Almighty God will bless us with understanding that is unmatched. This book, the Quran, that we read from, your book and our book, no matter who you are, this book is for your benefit. This book is an institution in itself. This book allows the world to establish other institutions. This book allows us to go into various fields of science. This book allows us to understand what is known as psychology, what is known as those who are able to go inside of the mind, but more so, this book helps us with our soul, the cleansing of our soul. This book helps us with our family life. This is the book that is pure, having no doubt within it. This is the book that has no confusion in it. If you read this book and you come out confused, it is saying something about you not yielding your way, your mind, your heart, your desire to Almighty God. There's no, as the saying goes, there's no, there's no if, ands, and buts about it. You are reading the actual words of Almighty God. So this calls for us to be submissive 
while we are reading this book. I was a believer in the Shaitan Rajim. So who will feed Ibrahim while Musa? The book of Ibrahim, the book of Abraham, and the book of Moses. Why would I read that particular ayah, that particular verse? Abraham, it is reported, is the first to receive a book, a revelation. He is the first. And Abraham is known as the father of the faith, the father of the faith, the father of logic and rationale in terms of when we look at scripture and we actually see one reasoning, reasoning, doing deductive reasoning and trying to get an understanding of what has happened and what is happening in the minds and in the hearts of men. We are responsible. We are responsible for this machine, for this mind, for this body, for this soul that Allah has loaned us. He has loaned us life. He has given us life. And he also gives death. And we are tested with death. We are tested with the death of our loved ones. We are tested with the death of our friends, our closest family members. And Allah tests us constantly to see how much, what does it take in order to break you and to see whether or not after you have been knocked down, how will you get up? How will you face the reality of time? How will you face this world that the shaitan, that the corrupt in the world, the corrupt in the society, how will you deal with them when they throw their best blow? You as a Muslim, as a believer, whatever your belief is, your faith is, you are to be strong against adversity. But look what we have in our father, Abraham. In order to be a part of a family, a strong family, you have to be willing to give. You have to be willing to share. You have to be concerned about every member of the family. You have to have a love that's undaunted. You have to look for opportunities as to how you can help your brothers and your sisters. How can you contribute to the household? What do you bring to the household? And if not knowing as to how to divide, how to share, how to gather for the benefit, then you come among those that are wiser than you in certain fields. But look at the beauty of the mind that Allah, that God has given all of us when we make a contribution, like a good soup. I love the soup that my mother picks. I mean, it's, it's, it's just so tasty. So many different ingredients in the soup that are beneficial. And we know the actual liquid in the soup is more beneficial than the meat, than the potatoes, than the spaghetti, than the onions, because it is all gone into the liquid itself. And it's like eating greens. I recall my great-grandmother, she used to love to drink or to sip pot liquor, pot liquor, off the greens. And you could hear the sound. I can still hear it in my, in my ears now, although she has passed some years ago, some 60 or so years ago. But I can still visualize her sitting down at the table drinking that pot liquor. Now, talking about liquor, Liquor, hearing the word liquor, I think about the liquor that is being consumed by those in the society that's causing them to become drunk and drunken, drunk and drunken. We can take not only liquid, but various other drugs, ignorance being one of the main, I guess maybe possibly the worst drug, the drug of ignorance, where we allow those things that are impure to come into this beautiful body, this beautiful mind that God has created, to come into the soul, the life that God gives us, the soul that he gives us, the breath of life, say a portion, say a portion of his spirit. When we read Quran, when we read scripture, certainly we can read it literally, and certainly we can get wonderful directions, wonderful guidance, we can get light, pure light. But those who are striving with the best of their being, they are those who receive more. If you work overtime, it should be common sense that the person that might have worked 40 hours, you work 48 hours, or maybe you work 50 hours, maybe that person might have worked 30 hours that week. It's
common sense that the person that works more is going to get more. For the believers, for the workers, for the diligent ones, it should be common sense to others that are not as diligent as those who are putting forth more effort. It should be common sense that the one God is going to give more understanding to the workers, to those who are striving with their possessions. Oh, is he putting putting us down? Is he putting anyone down where he's speaking? Is he speaking to the audience? Those who are listening in, who are tuning in, is he putting down people? No, I'm simply warning. If you want the best, you have to give the best. You have to give of your time. So again, I say, I'm not bringing you anything new. I'm trying to make you aware of what has been in your midst all of the time. Like a little earlier. I'm looking for my keys. And I'm walking around and have people here in the community that was helping my grandson and us, helping me to find my keys. And my grandson just pointed out to me, he likes to catch me a different time. I said, Papa, pointed to my hand. I had the keys in my hand, but I'm going from the kitchen to the office, everywhere looking for my keys. Something right in my midst. And I'm looking other places and not being aware. We look for truth. We look for understanding. We look for guidance. And it's right in our midst. We seek to go abroad. We don't have to go, with many no disrespect to the Pope, but we don't have to go to the Pope. We're Muslim. We don't have to go to Africa, to Saudi Arabia, to Pakistan, and we love our brothers, wherever they may be. But God grants guidance to whom he chooses when he chooses. So among us, you are very wise. As a community, God has blessed our community to strive, to work hard. And he has blessed the poor, those who were poor in spirit, those who were poor in knowledge. So because of our striving and our dedication and our faith in God, God has brought, and I love it, I love to go among my Christian brothers and sisters who are very sincere. And I hear different phrases that they use that, you know, we come a mighty long way. And we can identify with that. You don't have to be a Christian to identify with that or a Muslim to identify with that, but it's the truth. Think about where we have came from. Not just individual, but as a people. Do we need to go further? Certainly we do. Can we go further? Certainly we can. Are we going further? Yes, we are. You might have heard that from our former president. Yes, we can. So we are already in motion. We are already successful. If you will accept who you are, if you will accept what you have, no matter how you might have stumbled, no matter how you might have fallen, get up. Get up. It's in you to get up. This life, it requires movement. Life requires movement. You don't see, you don't see life coming from dead things. Life requires that we move from Quran once again. Zero 6, Ayah 88. This is the guidance of God. He giveth the guidance to whom he pleases of his worshippers. If they were to join other gods with him, all that they did would be vain for them. Constantly being warned. This is no joking religion. This is not a part-time religion. It is a religion that requires of us that we admonish ourselves that we admonish each other, that we learn to listen deeply. We don't have ears just to be, just to have ears. They're to be utilized. We don't have eyes, just something to stuck. And these sockets, they are to visualize, they are to grasp, they are to look. They are constantly moving, like I was telling my granddaughter, constantly looking like you look at a camera, the shutter. You take a picture, real just that quick, and the camera takes everything in the room, the shutter, when it closes, it takes a picture of everything in the room. When you hear the words of God, when you read the words of God, your soul is taking it in. Your subconscious is taking it in. And when you're trying to be conscious of actually what is transpiring in your life at that time, and you are sincere about it, you are being elevated. Your mind, your soul, your being is being elevated. It is being purified. And the more you understand that what you have, it is special. That you are a special creation. 
You are not an animal. You are not a dog. You are, you are, you are not some amoeba. You are one that has been given a responsibility as being the custodians. We are custodians. We are custodians of this creation. And Allah, God, has allowed us to utilize everything that is in creation. And this is a book which we have sent down, bringing blessings and confirming the revelation which came before it. This is God talking to us. A book that is sent down. When you speak to those of lesser understanding, lesser knowledge, you are speaking down, but you are not downing the person. You are those, we are those with this responsibility that should be willing to die for what we believe in. But you don't just throw away your life. Don't you say, all my life and death is all for God. Yes. But do it with some sense. Don't, 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 you know, be looking to jump off the cliff or I believe in God, I'm going to have a, a sacrifice. This human sacrifice. I'm going to sacrifice myself. No. God has given you life for a purpose. He has brought you from among the dead. He has brought us from among the dead. There are those who are dead. So God has given us life. How do we attain this life? Well, we have the literal. The literal meaning for the Quran. Beautiful. We hear things with the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Wonderful. But these words, Rahman and Rahim, from the letters, the, the letters, the beginning of these letters, they are both coming from the same word, the same base, the same origin. And one is talking about the creation. One is talking about how we begin in the womb. Both are referring to mercy, and both are giving us an indication of what is happening with the mercy in this life and the mercy that God gives us in the next life. If we are able to go to the paradise, inshallah, we all will, all the believers, and that we will see our relatives who have gone before us. But if we are able to reach that, do you know that that is a special mercy? That's a special blessing? And when we pray for God, I pray to God that he blesses, that he gives us good in this life as well as the next. The final part of that ayat say, and protect us and guide us and keep us from the torment of the fire. And we've been talking maybe for the last month and a half, the man is hiding. And we've been saying to you, that's hot as it is, I know I don't want to go to hell. So what are the qualifications to keep me from going to hell? You mean all I got to do is just, just leave and repeat what I've heard and be kind and nice and loving and be obedient to God? Hey, cut me in, write me in. This is the opportunity that we have as human beings, not black human beings, not African Americans, or not Caucasian, whoever, whatever your ethnic origin is, no. But as a human being, this is a fine opportunity, a wonderful opportunity, a great opportunity for us to enjoy the life that God has planned for us later. But even right now, we should be enjoying this very moment. We're sober. We should want to be sober all of the time to see the sure reality. Because we all have experienced some things in our life that is not bring or has not brought us total pleasure, total pleasure. But pain, we try to learn how to deal with pain. But look what God has done. Again, in mentioning our father Abraham. And he said of Abraham that Abraham and his son, they raised the house. What house? They raised the house that is known as the Kaaba. But it is more so talking about your house, your mind, our community, our family life, this own month. And the house that's actually been spoken of, you really can't see it, although we have this physical structure. There in Mecca. The structure is there. It has been built. It is a sign of who we are, what we can accomplish. It is a sign of all people coming together. So Abraham and his son erected this house. And they said, Abraham and his son, he said, Our Lord, accept this service from us. For thou art the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Our Lord, make of us Muslims bowing thy will. And our progeny of people, Muslims bowing 
to thy will and show us our places for the celebration of due rights. This is what the Quran is saying. This is from Surah 2, Ayah 127 and 128. And turn unto us in mercy, for thou art the off returning, the off returning, the most merciful. Oh, we say sometimes, Lord, have mercy. We can be going through stuff that, oh, Lord, have mercy. It's just so difficult. And Lord, the Lord, the Lord, not Jesus, not Prophet Jesus, not our wonderful brother, masterful teacher, not Jesus, but the Lord who created Jesus, the one God. That is so plain. And I wish our Christian brothers and sisters would use the mind, the logic of our father Abraham. Your father Abraham, our father Abraham. The father of the Jews. Those who practice Judaism. Abraham means it's very, it's very significant to all of us. But I wish those who say that you love Jesus the Christ, I wish you would look close at your covenant. At your covenant. I attended a funeral yesterday of one of my relatives, and I was looking at the covenant on the back of the wall. They had the Ten Commandments. Beautiful writing on the back of the wall. But I was wondering and hearing some of the recital of some of the things that were said, and bless their heart, may Allah forgive them. They are wrong, and bless their intentions. But I looked at the covenant, and the first thing I saw, what is the first covenant? Y'all remember? That you know, have no other God before me. Have no other God before you. That's powerful. That says a whole lot. If they are studying these commandments one by one, thou shalt have no graven images. And we still see images projecting supposedly God, but suppose they're supposed to be Jesus. But the book is speaking against that. So we are hearing a lot of things that are being said, but are not being thought about. What do we say to our Muslim brothers and sisters? And I've said it twice, I know. I know I've talked about this twice. And I've mentioned Muhammad ibn Abdullah. I said, he was not an Arab prophet. And I paused, like I'm doing now. I said, wait, what do you, what do you mean? He was, a, he, was a, he, was a, he was an Arab? Yes, he was an Arab. And he lived among his people for 40 years. And when he received the revelation, he didn't receive the revelation for one particular tribe, one particular people, but he had a universal message. He was restoring order back into the world, and gradually, you hear, you read in the Quran, it speaks of the fecundating winds. How the wind takes up seeds, and it carries these seeds miles and miles and miles away, different seeds. And even in looking at a crane, the various birds that walk in waters, walk in ponds, or walk in lakes. It might be fish. It might be they are fishing in their lakes. And they walk among these various plants because different fish, they lay their eggs among various vegetation. And as the birds, these cranes and other birds, as they walk in this particular environment where these eggs are, they get on their legs, their feet. And as they fly to other lakes, they are actually carrying these eggs, not knowing it, carrying these eggs to other lakes, to other bodies of water. Then we see the flowers, the trees, as the winds are gently going. We don't see it. No, we can't see wind, but we know it's there. We know something has happened. The gentle breeze, the gentle breeze, the gentle winds, the fecundating winds. And so seeds are being blown from one environment to the next, from the wind. From your beautiful voices, as you speak, as you talk to people, as you recite these words, as you recite these teachings, as you even quote, whether it's Malcolm, Shabazz, Abelaz Muhammad, as you recite the words even of the, the beautiful poetry of Mayor Angela, as you recite the words of Mayor Walter E. Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with him and reward him in paradise. As you recite all these words from all these great men and women that have ever lived, as you recite them, air comes from the throat. It comes from the mouth. As you suck it in, as you breathe in the oxygen and you're giving it off, as you take in the words, these concepts, these ideas, these truths, and you speak these words, they're going out into the environment. As we speak to the radio audience and those who will see us again on Facebook and YouTube, we're giving you words. You're hearing sound. 
But within the sounds of the words that I'm giving you is light, it's direction. And it's not just me. There are many Muslims in association with the man more than Muhammad and other great leaders and great teachers. But right now, that's our preference. That gives us stability in listening at this man who has came up, who Allah blessed us with right here in America. In fact, when the man more than Muhammad passed, they were on TV and they were saying on the news, national news, they say America's imam has passed. You know how powerful that is? But because we don't know, it's like, oh, well, I'm not of that faith. Or oh, I, I, I don't accept them. You can't accept yourself. You're not accepting another human being that looks just like you in your soul, in your heart. So we have a great responsibility in putting down our selfishness. In putting down who in putting down those who put down others who are standing out front. You don't know the struggles of another sister or another brother until you work with them, until you are steadfast with them. It's very easy for us to go off on a journey, go off on a path that the Satan has paved the way that looks so beautiful. All of its glitter, all of its gold, those things that are just mind-boggling, that pull us away from our own beautiful beauty. All of us, we are so beautiful, we look so good, Handsome and pretty and beautiful. I'm joking, I'm always joking with my, with my grandchildren. And we mentioned the word handsome and, and beauty the other day. And we were making definitions in terms of who was handsome and who was beauty, beautiful, you know. They were not all about Papa was beautiful. You know, he said, Papa is handsome, you know, in the way that I can be handsome. But I'm saying to you, we have to learn how to identify, how to adjust, how to break down who we are and what we are and the gifts that we have. So I'm saying regardless of your paper education, regardless of the papers that you have, doctors and masters and whatever, that's so wonderful because you have dedicated your time to learn. But if you really want to learn more so, educate your soul, your mind. Become productive in the society, in your community. Don't worry about what somebody else say, what someone say about you. You know what you're going through in life. God knows. That's all, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. But as we come together, taking this word, these words, these powerful words, and the Quran just invigorates us, our spirit, as we talk about it. As I talk to you during Juma, during these various times and other times that I'm speaking, I just slow it down. Because the Spirit is so powerful. Some of you say, oh, the Holy Ghost. Or he said, the Holy Spirit. Now this goes into the second way that we understand the Quran. Allah teaches you. He gives you inspiration. And in some readings, sometimes you see in church that inspirational readings or an inspirational hymn. Inspiration. God inspires you. He inspires us as a body. And we are strong as a body. And as we point out our individual shortcomings to each other, as we pull our brother and sister to the side, as we speak this beautiful language that Muhammad ibn Abdullah spoke, that he taught, as how he was taught, this wonderful character and personality, how you begin to grow. And I can look at you at different times and I see the glow on your face. I see the smiles that you have. And though we may be in pain from various illnesses, just the idea that God has touched your soul and wants you to be steadfast and you want to be steadfast and you don't want to give up. And when we fast, when we pull ourselves away from those things that tear down our body, physical body, certainly, but what about our mental and spiritual body? I want to stay away from anything that causes me to detour from what God wants me to have. This wonderful meal and diet that the one God has given me, has given us. So when we come together with this wonderful prepared meal and those in the reins of my voice, we invite you to come out anytime, any joy, prayer, which the time period is from 1.30 to 2.30 every Friday. And as we are meeting now, 12.30 until 
But next Sunday is a very special day for us because we have what is known as potluck. Every fourth Sunday, we are to bring a meal and we come together. And as the old adage, we say, we come together to chat and chew, to enjoy a fine meal, but also more, more icing on the cake when we teach from the Quran, when we teach from the Bible, when we teach a universal truth. This is a universal truth, a universal awareness. And if you listen to these words that we share with you, you will understand your Bible better. You will understand yourselves, your family better. And it makes you stand up and be a strong Muslim, a strong Christian. And it makes you aware of what's happening on the spiritual plane. Do you know that there are those who do not believe that Jesus even existed at all? Do you know that there are those who don't believe in the shaitan or devil? There are those who are part or who say that they are of the Jewish faith. So there's no existence. Jesus didn't exist. There's no shaitan. They see themselves as those who are actually driving humanity to God. And rather than have a shaitan, this is no guesswork, Rather than have a shaitan, they consider themselves as being the whip. They're the driving force for the rest of humanity to drive the rest of humanity to God. So them being the whip, whatever it takes in order for them to push people to God, but they're doing it in a selfish way. That's not all of those in the Jewish faith. But there's a special group among them, a corrupt group among them, Yes, they are corrupt among the Muslims, corrupt among the Christians. But this earlier thing, this earlier germ, because you know when you get sick, you have a cold, the doctor gives you something to rid yourself of the germ, like it was an antibody. So you're trying to rid yourself of the germ. And for those who are praying, who are steadfast, who are giving, as you read the Quran every day, as you pray every day, you're ridding the germs of spirituality, the false germs, the corrupt germs. But we are talking about this cold, this bacteria that enters the environment and destroys those that are around it, unless truth comes in and knock away falsehood. So I'm saying to you, be very careful what you allow into your environment. We mentioned some time ago that I was speaking about emotions, that we shouldn't be emotional. Now I mean it in the sense that Emotions does not surface among us because that's something mental by being emotional. But I mean, boy, you are just so overwhelmed with emotions that you can separate or balance yourself between the material and the spiritual. You don't have enough within you in terms of rationale how to understand, how to decipher, how to break down who God is, and though we will never know who God is totally, but in terms of you understanding who God is, who Jesus is, who Moses was, who Muhammad is, who all of these men were other than God, because God stands above the creation, this creation that we see. And we are told that God says, Kun fayakun, be, and it is. But we can't say that. There are men who try to duplicate life. Men are still trying to find out how does life come about. How was man created? Then we would just think about this natural creation with the sperm and egg, leave it there and come forward. When God wants us to know something, wants you to know something, you're going to know it. I'm saying you as humanity. That is the bigger picture, to see ourselves as humanity. The things that are happening to our youth out there. I'm telling you, this race problem is in America and throughout the world it has happened because of false religious teaching. So if I said false religious teaching, that should let you know then that they are correct religious teaching. It's always basically an opposite. The opposite of good is bad. So God has given us an understanding of what has happened in this world to throw people off. And it got into a globe. What you see, and again, meaning no disrespect to you, my Christian brothers and sisters, who I love very well. If I didn't, I would tell you. But what you are reading that has been given to you as the new testimony, the new testament, the new dispensation, it is not 
the words. It is not the written words of Esau Ibn Mary, Jesus the Christ, or Christ Jesus. We accept Christ. That's what you don't understand about Muslims. But we are not looking for a physical man named Jesus to return. But in terms of the spirit, in terms of his teaching, the clarity of his teaching, they're back. Actually, they never left. There were those who had them, but they were afraid. But there were also those who lied to you, humanity. When you look at the teachings of the one that is known as Paul, things you hear about Peter and a few others that are given in the New Testament, these men, some of these men never encountered Jesus the Christ. Uh, I know, don't cut the TV off and do it, y'all. I'm just asking you to go and do the research. Don't be so quick. Don't get so emotionally attached that everything you have heard before, it has to be true. You might say, well, mister, what you're saying, it might not be true. I just ask you to research it. Just research it. Go and look and see who these men were. Do some dirt. When it comes to your soul, you should want all the understanding that you can possibly gain. Question. Don't be afraid to. If you're talking to someone, they don't want you to question them. It's time for you to go. Separate it from them. What's your peace, brother? What's your peace, sister? Hopefully you'll get an understanding. But you still have to maintain who you are. You are a true bringer and a true seeker. So these people didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't know the Christ. The thing that they attributed to him. A logic-minded person as they read some of these things and think and not get so just emotionally attached without thinking. Yes, feel good about who you are. Feel good about being a good Christian and a good person. But don't drown yourself with fanaticism and mysticism. Religion is not about mysticism. It is not about spookism. It's about sure truth, sure reality. So don't play with your soul, don't play with your mind, don't play with your family. You might say, I'm not playing with my family. When you are not seeking an understanding of what God wants you to know, and you're just accepting something, well, my mother was this, and my father was this, and my grandmother, and blah, 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 was this. The intentions, the intentions of our four parents were very sincere. I've seen and I've lived with wonderful Christians, dedicated Christians. And my grandmother was one. And the uncles and us, wonderful Christians. But their understanding as I grew in understanding and knowledge and wisdom, it was not where God wanted them to be. But when they heard me, what God had blessed me with as well as others, they began to think a little different. Do you know, in my closing remarks, because I haven't really even remarked on what I have for you totally, why is it? that you are a listening audience and viewing audience, why is it that you are afraid to do research and when we say to you that the majority, especially in the last hundred years or so, during their time of slavery, the majority of our people that came to this country as slaves, they were Muslims. Why does that, why does that frighten you? Why do you want to accept that all Muslims are terrorists? And you are living in America. Our country is ours now. You bought us here. We worked for it. We earned it. We love it. We just don't love the things that are occurring to our people and other people of color and any human being. But we're looking at the family right now. So why is it that you are afraid to do research to find out who you were? You can go and do all this genealogy. Yeah, my grandfather was so, and yeah, we came, yeah. But why are you afraid? If someone says, check and see if you were Muslim, if there were Muslim in your ancestry. Go back and look at the record. And then once you find this out, you should make a decision. You owe it to yourself to at least to inquire, what is this religion, Islam? What are these Muslims talking about? But you don't have to go abroad, right in America. You can learn all of the Islam you need. But stay away from the fanatics. You got some fanatics. Yes, you do in Christianity. But I'm telling you, 
you find many people who have deluded the truth for their own benefit. Peace be unto you. Thank you for doing your family perspective. They call to freedom. May Allah bless you and reward you. Assalamu alaikum.